You're watching Sports Shorts Daily presented by La Bears Casino and Hotel in Baton Rouge and the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame Museum in Natchitoches. You can follow Sports Shorts Daily by going to our YouTube page, Sports Shorts, hosted by Ronnie Rance, and get our 15-minute weekday video. Joining me is another member of the 2021 Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame class, former New Orleans Saints great. Uh, joining me is Marcus Colston. Marcus, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, Ronnie. How about yourself? Doing great. Uh, first off, congratulations on this outstanding honor. There were over 150 people nominated, only eight selected, and uh, you're joining a fantastic class next summer in 2021. No, first and foremost, uh, thank you guys. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a tremendous honor and just being having the opportunity to go in with so many other great, great players and great, just great people um, in, the, in their own right. Um, it's truly an honor. A guy who grew up in Pennsylvania and played track and football in, in high school. And when I was reading up about you, you had the chance to go to, you know, Missouri. You had to go, at, at, they weren't an SEC school at the time, but you had a chance to go to SEC, a Missouri big time program, turned it down, decided to go to one double A Hofstra, following the footsteps of, say, a Wayne Corbett, who was a great receiver there. Why that decision? Uh, for, for me, it was, it was kind of a, a two part decision. Um, I had already committed to Hofstra uh, when, when Missouri came in. They came in the process pretty late. And um, I, I committed to Hofstra. I took the visit, uh, really fell in love with the vision that they had up there. Um, had some really good uh, veteran players at my position, a really good coaching staff, and um, my word was really important to me. So once I made that commitment, um, it was something that, that I wanted to stand behind. And, you know, for me, it was an opportunity um, to develop at my own pace, um, learn behind some really good players that were seniors. And, you know, for me, I, I knew it was going to be important for me to, to get on the field as soon as possible and um you know really continue to learn the game and, and and develop and i felt like you know going to a big 12 school at the time uh the way i was recruited um i probably would have been in a position where i would have had to red shirt red shirt a year and, and wait a few years to get my turn um versus you know going to hofstra gave me a chance to um get on the field pretty early and you know really learn learn in the fire um so you know, that, that opportunity really, really spoke to me and I um, feel like I made the right choice. When you were finishing your career at Hofstra, you ended up, of course, as we all know, being a seventh round pick by the New Orleans Saints. But w were there expectations, A, of being drafted higher? You know, when, when it came time to draft day, were you surprised that you went in the seventh round, disappointed? What was the thought process back then? Yeah, I, I was I was surprised. Uh, I got I got to say I was disappointed. Um, I felt like I, I put together a, a pretty good career at Hofstra, and you know when you play at that level, um, the the knock on you is always level to play. Um, you know you can put up numbers, and you know they they claim that they don't really know who you're playing against. Um, so when I got the opportunity to to go to the East West Shrine game and put on a good showing there, I uh, went to the combine, put on a pretty good showing. Um, showed that, you know, for a big guy I could run, um, you know, my expectation was to get drafted a lot sooner than I did. And, um, you know, it, it's one of those things that the, the, the way that you get into the league, it, it, it never leaves you. And um, it, it actually helped me develop this mentality that, you know, getting drafted as late as I did and kind of being where, where I felt like I was on the bubble, you know, for that first year. It, it gave me this this edge where I never felt like I could get complacent and comfortable, and it, it allowed me to continue to, to you know, really try and, and, and improve every single year of my career. Normally, when you go through the uh, draft process, there's certain teams that show more love than others, and you kind of have a little bit of an idea that, hey, if I'm there, this team's going to take me. What was it like with the New Orleans Saints? You know, this was a franchise coming off Katrina. You know, the Dome hadn't opened yet. It was kind of a mess. People got have, are used to the Saints now, but it wasn't like that 15 years ago. So were you, what were your conversations like with the Saints scouts, and did you think that was the team that would take you? I, I don't really remember having many conversations with the Saints scouts, uh, honestly. Um, I, I think I remember one at the Combine. 
um, it wasn't a team that was really on the radar at all for me. Um, so, you know, we got into that, that seventh round. Um, at that point, I was, you know, starting to get some calls from, from teams that had no more picks. Um, so I was kind of gearing up to, to pick where I wanted to go as a free agent. And, um, you know, I, I ended up getting a call that kind of, it felt like a little bit out of left field, but uh, I guess, what did I know, right? <laughs> When you got the call and you found out you were going to be a New Orleans Saint, what did you know, if anything, about the city of New Orleans, the state of Louisiana, and the organization? I knew nothing about Louisiana. I'd never been. Uh, I'd never been that, that deep in the South before. Uh, my only um, point of reference, you know, with, with New Orleans was the Saints. You know, I've been a football fan since I was four years old, so um, did get a chance to witness – uh, some, some not so good years. Um, so that was really my only point of reference. But, um, you know, getting down there, what, what, I, what I knew was that I was going into a city that, that had been through something catastrophic the year before, um, a team in a franchise that, you know, there, there were a lot more question marks and answers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so getting in there as a 22-year-old, um, you know, you can try and wrap your mind around what that experience is going to be like and try to predict what it's going to be like. But um, the reality was nothing like I could have prepared for. Obviously, you played your entire career with uh, future Hall of Famer Drew Brees, and we know what you guys became. But when we go back to that first year in New Orleans, I mean, Drew had his own issues, right? He was trying to get healthy and trying to just to, to develop his own uh, career. And there you guys are. What was that first meeting like? What do you remember about that first training camp uh, with Drew? It, it, was, it was odd because, uh, like I mentioned, question marks. And, and Drew um, was actually one of, one of those question marks. He was, he was coming off of, of a brutal shoulder injury. And um, we didn't get a chance to really work together that much in, in training camp and, and in the preseason because he, he was still kind of rehabbing and, and getting his way back. So, um, yeah, it was, it's one of those things where, um, you know, the stars kind of, kind of aligned through, you know, the, the, the training camp that we had at, at Millsaps College. And um, we kind of formed this bond just around um, trying to learn the playbook together, in, in a sense, and, you know, trying to kind of figure out, you know, what are, you know, you, you get the playbook on day one and it's just a bunch of lines, right? Um, but at some point, there's a lot of nuance that, that, you know, kind of comes into those lines where, you know, you're running in a certain angle and, um, you know, you have to get on the same page and kind of see things, see the defense the same way, understand the situations the same way. And, um, you know, through working, working through learning a new offense together, I think um, we were able to sync up and, and kind of, um, you know, do our, do, take what was in the playbook and kind of make it ours. Obviously, you sent, you uh, synced up pretty well, to say the least, over 700 catches, over 9,000 yards, over 72 touchdowns, which is an amazing number. When did you know that the chemistry was, was magic? When did you know? At what point in your career did you realize, man, we, we've got something special going here? You know what? It, it, it's one of those things, man. I just – I was never able to help my – I was never able to let myself get – to that level of comfort. Like I always felt like I, I had one foot out the door and I had to continue to improve and continue to prove that I belong there. Um, so it was one of those things where looking back, um, I, I really started to, to understand, you know, what it was that we accomplished. Um, you know, you say the, the, the number 700 catches. I mean, that's, again, I've, I've been a football fan for a long time, man. And, and I know, I know the gravity of that. And I know what that means within the context of the game. So, um, yeah, it was just one of those things where you, you didn't have time to smell the roses, you know, as, as you were doing it. But, but looking back on it, man, it was, it was some, some really good stuff we were able to accomplish together. Yeah, well, you came out the gate pretty fast, two 1,000-yard seasons to start your career. Let's go to 2009, the Super Bowl year. Um, you start out 13-0 and that year. Uh, and many people in New Orleans and Louisiana go, you know, the 2011 team might have been better than the 09 team. You know, that's kind of the, the woulda, coulda, shoulda year, 2011. But in 09, did you know, hey, man, this, this, is, this is the team? And what was that whole experience like for you? It was, it was a really um, – that was probably the most competitive team that I ever played on. 
Um, I remember the practice weeks. Um, you know, you got John Vilma versus Drew Brees, those kind of the two captains, offense and defense. Um, practice, it, it started to get to a point where, where practice was harder than the games. Wow. Um, just because you, you kind of sharpened your knife, um, you know, throughout the week going against, you know, probably the most opportunistic defense that I can remember seeing in, in a long time. And, um, you know, they kind of know what's coming already. So if you can beat that defense, um, chances are you get on the field on Sunday and they're, they're not going to have the level, uh, level of, of familiarity. They're not going to have the same type of playmakers um, and vice versa. So like that experience, um, that entire year, as it progressed, uh, I think we, we finally got to a place, I think it was right after that Patriots game for me, um, we beat those guys on Monday night and, you know, just understanding what that organization had accomplished throughout the 2000s, um, you know, beating those guys the way that we beat them. It was kind of that, that, you know, we're planting our flag. And um, that was when the confidence, I think, started to roll forward for us as, as a team. And um, again, like those, those work weeks, man, they're, they're memorable. I mean, some of the, some of the most competitive football I've ever played and, um, you know, having fun doing it. You go on and you win the Super Bowl down in Miami. And for those that, that aren't a part of that organization, you know, the, and don't know what that feeling is like when, when the, when, when I guess Tracy Porter intercepts the ball and he's running back for a touchdown at that point, you know, like we're, we're going to win this. We're going to be Super Bowl champs. Is there any way you can describe that to all the Saints fans and the people in Louisiana, what that moment was like? And were you able to be in a guy from Pennsylvania and play this college ball in New York? Were you, were you able to understand the gravity of what this means to the region? Yeah, it's, it's funny. I get chills uh, Was you just asking that question. Um, you, you kind of, like during the game, you really, with Peyton Manning on the other side, you can never really take a, that deep breath. Uh, when TP picked the ball off and, and that, that pick six, there was still like this little feeling in you, like it can't be over quite yet. But um, yeah, it, it, it was one of those things where um, just being in New Orleans uh, for, for four years at that point, understanding what that team meant to the city and what it meant to the revitalization of the city and the region, um, just being around, you know, making friends and, and you know, forming, forming uh, relationships and acquaintances within the community. Um, it didn't take very long to figure out what the Saints meant to the Gulf, the Gulf region. Um, you know, so, so being able to be a part of something like that, that was so much bigger than football. Um, you could feel it, um, you know, at some point in that four year run, the, the, the Cowboys stopped being America's team and the Saints started being America's team. Right. And, um, no, you, you can absolutely feel the gravity of it. And I think what really drove it home for me was, was the parade, um, just to see the streets filled, just to see uh, and feel, really be able to feel the emotion that was on those streets, um, you know, and literally have a parade from, from noon until it got dark at, dark at, at night, man. That was, a, it was an incredible feeling and, and something really special to be a part of. Every every Saint player you talk to that was a part of that Super Bowl year always points to the parade as, you know, really being the icing on the cake. The best thing about winning was the parade. And, you know, there's reports there might have been as many as a million people along the route uh, for that thing. And they, to a man, everybody talks about that. You had six 1,000 yard seasons in the NFL. When do you know it's it's time to hang it up? You played a long time from 06 to 2015. You know, probably could have kept playing. You took great care of yourself. You had the hyperbaric chamber. You, everybody knew about your nutrition. When did you make the decision and know, hey, this is it? Yeah, I mean, for, for me, like playing the position that I play, it's, you know, father time is undefeated. Um, you know, even, even in the 10 years that I played, the things that I was able to do physically at 22, I wasn't able to do at 32. So over the course of that 10 years, my game had to change. I had to keep kind of evolving my game and get to a place where I could, I could, learn, I could learn to play the game from the neck up as opposed to depending on the neck down. And, you know, I got to a place after that 10th year where um, I felt like it just, th there, was, there was starting to be this, this kind of this disconnect. And 
um, I, I had a standard that I had set for myself and I knew that I wasn't going to be a guy that was just kind of hanging on and, and, you know, staying on the roster just because I could. Um, I had a standard that I, I wanted to perform. I wanted to be a contributor. And if I couldn't perform to the level that I, that I felt necessary, uh, I knew I was going to step away from the game. So, um, you know, when, when Sean called me, um, you know, the, the off season going into 2016 and, and let me know that they were going to release me. Um, I knew right then and there that that was it for me. Um, I wasn't going to go and, and, you know, try to hang on at, at another training camp and uproot my family and, you know, potentially go somewhere for, for, for three weeks and get cut in training camp. Um, it was, it was important to me, you know, the 10 years that I spent in New Orleans um, and, you know, to be able to hang them up and, and, do it all in one place, in a place where um, I was able to kind of build something that that uh, I was really proud of. Um, so yeah, I still had a little bit left in the tank, but um, I like to feel like I still got one two minute drill left in me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you go back to New Orleans, we know you're, you're living over in Pennsylvania, but when you get back to the city, uh, people still love you. And, and when you talk to Saints players that have spent a number of years, anybody who's played four or more years for the New Orleans Saints, there's always a special bond between the city and the players. Are you able to feel that? And I know, uh, you know, I know you're an adjunct, adjunct professor, you know, this semester with the University of New Orleans. So the tie is very deep with the city. But are you able to, uh, is the love go both ways? It, absolutely. Uh, New Orleans will always be a second home. Um, no, the, the, the love is, is real. And I think um, that, that was part of uh, my decision to hang them up too. Like just, you, it, it would have been hard to duplicate what I built in New Orleans. Um, just from a, um, from a, a fan perspective, um, from a career perspective, a front office and organization, um, everything about that 10 year experience was, was first class. It was top notch. And um you know, just, just have an opportunity to get back down there to some of the games, um, just being around the town. It's, it's always, it's always a, a feeling of, of mutual love just because, you know, the city of New Orleans and the people of New Orleans made my 10 years down there incredible. Well, you're in the ring of honor. We got to see that ceremony last year. Had to be a, a, a tremendous for you. Tell us a little bit about uh, what it's like being a, a professor in college. You're doing it obviously virtually at the University of New Orleans. What are you teaching? And teaching? Tell us. Tell us about it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm teaching a course on on entrepreneurial leadership, and um, a lot of a lot of the course is is really a manifestation of of my experiences. Um, you know. And not just the, the, what it takes to be a professional athlete, but really the journey to becoming a professional athlete. And what I've been able to do is, is kind of take that journey and really the mindset and the principles that, that allowed me to kind of take this path. And I've, I've distilled it out into a curriculum. And you know, the, the goal is really to, to work with the, the students in the course and kind of help them develop their own game plan um, as they transition from uh, college life into the professional world. Um, because I mean, there, there are a lot of transferable skills. There are a lot of, of the, just the experiences and the life lessons that that, that journey through sports teaches you um, and the mindset that you gotta have uh, to, to achieve. Um, there's a lot of that stuff that, that really translates well into that, that transition between college and, and the workforce. And um, I mean, that's, that's really the foundation of the course. So it's, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a learning curve for me, um, but it's, it's, it's been a really fun uh, journey so far and um, looking forward to digging a little bit deeper into this education thing. Well, very, very cool. I, I was, it was exciting to see that about a month or so ago uh, in the news that you're doing that at the University of New Orleans. Well, once again, congratulations on your uh, future induction into 2021 into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, arguably one of the greatest uh, players in Saints history. You're going to have a great time in, in Natchitoches, Louisiana next year for three days uh, with a lot of great events. I know people are all around the state are going to be excited to see you. Thanks so much, Marcus. Uh, thank, thank you guys and really looking forward to it.
Thanks for watching Sports Shorts Daily, presented by the Bears Casino and Hotel in Baton Rouge and the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame Museum in Natchitoches. Don't forget to follow Sports Shorts on Facebook, Twitter at sports underscore shorts, and check us out on Saturday mornings from 10 to noon at Sports Shorts Radio on 104.5, 104.9 ESPN Radio in Baton Rouge.